What up guys and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Christoph and in this video we're gonna be covering 10 sleeper OP builds that will help you guys win more games. Part of dominating any meta is staying up to date with what the best players are experimenting with and succeeding with. And as always, we're here to help you guys. We've done all the hard work for you. It's all in this video. And for our question of the day, which keystone do you guys think needs to be changed or removed? Personally, I would say that Omnistone needs to get out of there. No one is using it. It's a great concept, but I just think that it's pretty weak overall. Riot, just get it out of there. And as always, if you guys want to get better at League of Legends, go find your challenger coach right now on ProGuides.com using the description link below. They are prepared to help you climb the ranks and tell you exactly what you need to do to improve in League. If you guys are interested in Project A, if you, some of you guys are into Counter-Strike, some of you guys are into first-person shooters, maybe Overwatch, we highly recommend you check out and subscribe to our new channel located in the description. So if you wanna go get that, it's also on the screen here. So if you guys want that, go check it out. All right, let's get into the video. First up, let's talk about not one, but two champions. When played as a pair, we're seeing more Zaya and Rakan duos both running Hail of Blades together. This build allows them to deal an insane amount of burst damage that you should not underestimate. While this duo already deals a ton of damage, taking Hail of Blades on both of them allows you to burst down their targets even faster than before. For runes, let's talk about Zaya first. You'll want to take Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Triumph, and Bloodline. On Rakan, take Hail of Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Revitalize, and finally Bone Plating. These builds maximize the all-in potential for both of these champions. And for items, you're going to want to go with a standard build for both of these champions. For Zaya, you'll want to go Essence Reaver, Berserker's Greaves, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, Phantom Dancer, and a Guardian Angel. Rakan wants to build a Bulwark of the Mountain, Boots of Mobility, Zeke's Convergence, Redemption, Locket of the Iron Solari, and a Knight's Vow. Next up in the sleeper OP builds, we have a build for Ezreal mid. So recently it looks like a few players have been making the switch from Conqueror into Press the Attack. This is because PTA is better for those quick burst your trades, while Conqueror shines in those long extended fights. For runes, you're going to go PTA, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, followed by Sorcery Second for Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. Next for items, you'll want a Mana Immune, Ionian Boots, Triforce, Sanguine Blade, Bloodthirster, and a Last Whisper. The combination of Sanguine Blade and Bloodthirster increases your sustain by a lot, and also gives you a lot of raw power. You can also swap out your Triforce for Iceborne Gauntlet if you aren't too confident with your Qs, but Triforce overall will do more damage with this build. As for Boots, you can sometimes swap to go for a more defensive route, but then you'll need to compensate for the 10% CDR loss with a Dust Blade instead of a Sanguine. Give this build out a try, it's really, really fun, guys. With his other sets of buffs this patch, Gnar has moved on to become a viable jungler as well. Generally, most players are sticking to a pretty vanilla build. For runes, they'll take Conqueror Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Bone Plating, and Overgrowth. Taking Bone Plating alongside Overgrowth provides Gnar that extra bit of tankiness that can make transforming into Mega Gnar possible to clutch some games. Alternatively, a few daring players are instead taking Hail of Blades, like on AP Gnar with the exact same setup. This is a much more aggressive one for sure, but can definitely work when he's playing against less mobile and less threatening opponents. For items, you'll want to build either a Blood Razor or Cinder Hulk with Skirmisher's Saber, Ninja Tabby, Black Cleaver, Frozen Mallet, Random Anduin's Omen, and a Guardian Angel. These are really staple items on Gnar, and you can choose which jungle item you want based on if you want to add more damage to your team composition or play for survival. To everyone's surprise, Omni Stone is actually seeing some usage. Who would have thought? We're seeing some quirky players run it, and it makes some sense. He can use a lot of them pretty well as a ranged character. While Fleet Footwork is nice for some extra sustain in lane, there are plenty of times where you instead kind of want that extra damage later into the game. Corky hits like a truck in the mid to late game, but when enemies surviving while only one basic attack away can be really heartbreaking. Runes like Predator, Electrocute, or Dark Harvest, or even Press the Attack can come in clutch pretty much at all stages of the game. Corky has a pretty easy time utilizing every single keystone because of his attack range, so you really don't sacrifice anything at all to run it on him. In fact, he uses a lot of them quite optimally. Depending on your roll of the dice, this keystone might actually be what you need to find kills on your opponents. Consecutive good rolls could lead to a ton of extra damage during the laning phase, as well as team fights. 
For runes, you'll want to run Omnistone, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Presence of Mind, and Legend Alacrity. For items, you're going to want a standard quirky build with Triforce, Sorcerer Shoes, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, Phantom Dancer, and Guardian Angel. That will do the trick for most games. Next up is Aatrox with a little bit of a twist. Instead of Black Cleaver, a new build on the rise is replacing it with a Trinity Force. Essentially, it provides a lot of the same stats that Black Cleaver does, but in place of the armor penetration, you'll get a lot more damage. Especially against squishier targets, this is preferable because of how often Aatrox is able to activate the Spellblade passive on Trinity Force. His Q as well as his E are spammable, meaning he can utilize it off cooldown. Attack speed isn't really that bad of a stat on Aatrox as well. Aatrox is able to attack in between between his Q cast pretty smoothly once he has enough of it, further increasing his damage output under the right circumstances. For the runes, you're going to want to run Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Ravenous Hunter, and Taste of Blood. In terms of items, go with a Trinity Force, Ninja Tabby, Death Stance, Spirit Visage, Guardian Angel, and Sterex Gage. This build literally only changes one item, but the gameplay changes a ton. You'll want to take this build when you don't need that armor reduction from Black Cleaver, and instead want to deal more damage to squish your enemies. Following some quality of life buffs to Amumu, a new damage focused build has started to gain traction. While it's a glass cannon build, Amumu with some more damage is a friendly breath of fresh air. For items, you're going to want to run Runic Echoes, Sorcerer Shoes, Hextech Proto Belt, Leandri's Torment, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and Imrella Nomicon. Note how nearly all of these items provide some tankiness alongside a damage boost. At the very least, Amumu isn't going to blow up when he jumps in but he'll still have the potential to one-shot a lot of those squishier enemies. This build also implements Electrocute rather than Aftershock in it, so we really mean it when we say you can one-shot opponents. For runes, take Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Triumph, and Coup de Gras. The combination of Electrocute, Sudden Impact, and Coup de Gras give Amumu a pretty significant damage boost. He's going to hit a lot harder than you'd expect, and it definitely helps that Amumu also deals a ton of AoE damage. Ultimate Hunter is also a great pickup on Amumu, since his gameplay revolves heavily around it being available to him. While you might have seen this build mentioned in another one of our videos, it's one that definitely is worth mentioning again, and that's going to be Lethal Tempo Ezreal who is emerging now as the most prominent Ezreal loadout for basically every professional player. He's been in a weird spot this season, and it's honestly felt like there hasn't been a keystone that really works well on him. However, as of late, the incredible all-in power that Lethal Tempo provides Ezreal has made it a really easy choice for many. For the runes, you'll want to take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cutdown, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. This build makes Ezreal a team-fighting monster as well as a potent threat in lane. Usually players are used to a hit-and-run type of Ezreal, however Ezreal's E can be used aggressively, believe it or not. After activating Lethal Tempo, he can jump in and try to force heavy trades, especially if he's been stacking up his passive as well. The build is a standard one, you're going to want to go Man Immune, Ionian Boots, Trinity Force, Blade of the Rune King, Lord Dominic's Regard, and a Mercurial Scimitar. There have been an increase in sightings of Garen's one-shotting squishy characters. The main reason behind this is that a lot of them have started adding Static Shiv to their builds. While it won't activate off his E, it'll make his Q hurt a ton more. It isn't uncommon to be able to activate it twice either, since you're going to chase your enemies for quite a distance. Building a Static Shiv provides some extra burst damage, which when paired with the bonus damage from Deadman's play as well, can pack quite the punch. For the build, you'll want to run a Trinity Force, Berserker's Greaves, Static Shiv, Deadman's Plate, Steric Gauge, and Death's Dance. This build provides a ton of extra damage on top of what Garen already brings to the table. At first glance, it might seem a little troll, but you seriously need to give it a try. Anytime he pops out from the shadows and cues an enemy, you already know they're dead. The runes are, once again, pretty typical, as he'll usually run Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Demolish, and Bone Plating. Bone Plating further increases Garen's durability in the intense fights, and Demolish should allow you to pick up some early turret plating when he successfully knocks an enemy out of lane. Graves has always been an in-your-face champion, so it's kind of surprising that this build didn't come up earlier in the season. Conqueror is a pretty solid choice on Graves because it synergizes well with his playstyle. Although Graves is a ranged champion, he's still able to stack it up quite quickly if he lands his abilities. The bonus damage as well as the sustain from Conqueror transform him into a powerhouse that can absolutely dominate his enemies. Especially as fights drag out even longer and longer, Graves can get a ton of value out of running Conqueror. 
Speaking of which, you'll want to take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Sudden Impact, and Ravenous Hunter. This setup is built around Graves' survival and long-term damage output. After casting his E, Graves will not only get tankier, but he'll also gain a slight boost in damage as a result of the lethality he gains from Sudden Impact. For items, build a Skirmisher's Saber with Warrior, Ninja Tabby, Black Cleaver, Death's Dance, Infinity Edge, and Phantom Dancer. Our last build is one with Victor, and boy does it hurt. Electrocute has resurfaced as an option for him, and it reminds me of when he used to run Thunderlords a few seasons ago. Well, to be fair, everyone ran that. Victor activates Electrocute quite easily. A Q, Basic Attack, and E will instantly chunk his opponents for a giant chunk of health. In the late game, he literally deletes any squishy champion. By taking Ravenous Hunter, Taste of Blood, and Mana Flow Band, you'll also ensure that you have more resources to stay in lane with. It's important as Victor to be able to stay in lane long enough to farm up for a Hex Core upgrade, so don't undervalue these runes. Victor is typically known as a scaling champion, but he's able to deal a ton of damage with his rune setup, even in the early game. Especially if you're in easy matchups, you'll want to abuse Electrocute as you'll be able to deal tons of damage to your opponents and also one-shot enemies with it later in the game. For items, build a perfect Hex Core, Sorcerer's Shoes, Luden's Echo, Rabadon's Deathcap, Void Staff, and Lich Bane. All these hard-hitting AP items will allow Victor to become a 1v9 machine in the later stages of the game. All right, guys, that concludes our Sleeper OP video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to stay notified to the channel and all the different news we're gonna be giving you throughout the week. If you guys are interested in getting better at League of Legends, you know what to do. Go click that description link below and find your challenger coach right now. And once again, guys, if you're interested in the new Project A, make sure to go to our new YouTube channel in the description link below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift. Thank <laughs> you.